And with that spiel, I'm going to hand it over to Brian and Shannon. You'll also see Angel Truesdale, who's from our training committee um, and is a librarian at UNC Charlotte. Um, she'll be co-hosting with me today. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Hart, uh, and I am the director for the Forsyth County Public Library. Uh, and today, um, we are thrilled to have uh, been invited to participate in this discussion and to share with you uh, some strategies for integrating or creating and then integrating a, a DEI plan for your library um, or libraries. Uh, we are particularly um, interested in this discussion or we're interested in having this discussion today because we do believe in leaning and being very intentional and in not just uh, you know, subscribing to trends um, and, and different uh, you know, progressions that the profession as a whole may take, uh, but rather making sure that you're being intentional about tailoring um, a DEI plan that suits and benefits your community and or larger organization. And so to that end, uh, today's presentation, uh, which I'm accompanied uh, by, by Shannon Dale Page to give will be titled, uh, Be Intentional, Not Identical, Creating DEI Strategies for the Library that Serves Your Community. And we can advance the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so again, my name is Brian Hart. I am the director for the Forsyth County Public Libraries. Prior to my uh, two year, uh, stint here. Um, I was the deputy director for the Greensboro Public Library uh, in the neighboring county of Guilford. Um, and prior to that, um, I've worked for approximately six or seven public libraries um, in different states um, over the course of what is now an approximately 15 year career. Um, and so uh, in each of those stops, I've tried to ensure that uh, was intentional about the services and programs and that has not ceased uh, in being here in Forsyth County. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shannon Dale Page, and I'm the Outreach, Diversity, and Inclusion Manager for the Forsyth County Public Library. I've been here just shy of over a year now, um, and I've also been at the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, so about seven years total in libraries here in North Carolina. All right, so we want to thank everyone for uh, joining us and we want to kind of talk about some of the key bullets of what we plan to discuss with you all today. Um, one of the points is the importance of patience and uh, stress and pace um, as you're navigating any sort of political or emotionally charged um, situations with your libraries or organizations when, it, when you're looking to kind of introduce uh, DEI strategies or um, staff that are going to focus on DEI strategies. Um, another one of the pointers is to explore ideal principles or strategies um, for any of the activities that you adopt. Um, so we're gonna kind of talk about what Forsyth County uh, Public Library has done in response to this. And we also wanna identify ways to build and improve and grow in spaces within library organizations and the communities that um, you know, we provide diverse, equitable, inclusive, and accessible programs with. And I believe we have a poll that we are going to do just before we head to the next slide. So the first poll question is an ideal principle and it's a question that says, does your library or organization have a plan that prioritizes ideal principles? And IDEA is an acronym that stands for inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. And Devon, if we could see the results from that poll. All right, that's pretty balanced. Um, we, we pretty much expected that people attending the session would have um, either an established goal or want to lean on resources to develop one. So this is actually pretty um, in alignment with what we, we were hoping for. All right, we can advance to the next slide. 
And so, you know, while there's certainly value in having a stated plan, uh, Forsyth County Public Library two years ago uh, would have been in the, I guess what is really the majority uh, here uh, who um, through the polls stated that they are either still developing a plan or do not yet have one. And so um, when, when I came on board uh, in this position, when I assumed this role uh, in May of 2020, there was clearly a uh, degree of social unrest and, and there were lots of communities that had been impacted um, by the social or civil unrest that which stemmed um, from the, uh, the, the, the murders uh, at the hands of uh, you know, uh, law enforcement. Um, and then obviously there was a very, um, uh, there was a, a widespread uh, sweeping uh, pandemic um, that was being felt uh, globally, uh, of course, locally as well. And while, you know, it would have been very easy or perhaps fairly easy for me to hit the ground running and, and to have mentioned or you know, um, kind of planted a flag and said, hey, you know, we really want uh, or must have uh, a statement here and now. Um, you know, we as an organization, uh, the library, we as a, a department of the larger organization, Forsyth County, must have uh, some kind of a statement or take some kind of a definitive uh, stand right here, right now. Um, however, uh, to be frank, I felt like I was still needing to observe and, and to do my due diligence and prudence in understanding, you know, not only the, the library um, and its history, but also understanding, you know, the larger organization and, and its priorities. And then, um, you know, not tertiary in any means, but I needed to also uh, understand the, the community and the various stakeholders therein and, and, and understand how, um, you know, the three uh, of those parties were, were all kind of interacting uh, and, 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 you know, uh, experiencing um, all of the societal ills uh, together uh, before just kind of, you know, leaning into my own whims and wishes of developing a plan um, that, that did, in fact, embrace or, or speak uh, directly to the need to have, um, you know, equity, diversity, and inclusive strategies or programs as a part of our existing slate of, of, of programs and events um, or services. And so um, what I really want to do at this time is kind of, you know, uh, point out a couple of things that are, I know are already still on everyone's uh, consciousness from uh, the summer of 2020, just because I feel like they will be an appropriate backdrop to, to show um, and, and hopefully illustrate uh, how we eventually uh, arrived at a plan and 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 the strategies that um, were used to get there and, and that are even used to um, you know sustain the trajectory that we're on um, you know not only as a library department but as a as a organization um, in, in terms of the larger organization of Forsyth County and so you know obviously as mentioned there were um, unprovoked, unwarranted murders of minorities by police officers. The COVID-19 pandemic was in the early uh, phases, uh, but it's still wreaking havoc on communities. Uh, even to this day, I, I come to you uh, from, from the comforts of my home, uh, kind of recovering from a, my own little bout with uh, COVID. Um, and then there was, of course, uh, at the time, uh, some political unrest due to campaigns and forthcoming elections, which uh, ultimately resulted in a January 2021 uh, insurrection, uh, if you will, arrest, you know, on, on the Capitol uh, grounds in Washington, D.C., uh, which might I add is only, you know, uh, roughly five to six hours from here. And so uh, it's inevitable that, you know, this community here in Forsyth County, North Carolina, would, would feel and uh, have ripple effects from all of these events. And, you know, these events were really traumatic. And, and there's a uh, uh, an article that appeared in the Harvard Public Review uh, titled The Age of Trauma. Um, and this quote uh, just says, over the course of 2020, about four in 10 adults uh, reported symptoms of anxiety and depression, according to a recent survey by the Kaiser Family Foundation, which, have, as you can see on the slide, was up from one in 10 uh, just prior to all of these events. And so to me, that is uh, significant because you're, you're talking about uh, you know what what society is experiencing and and you want to be responsive uh 
but you also want to be responsible in, in crafting out a plan for how to, you know, engage and inform people around all of these events because they're already being, you know, inundated with a lot of information and they're already having their lives perhaps turned upside down. And so you don't want to just launch into any old DEI strategy haphazardly. You want to be very cognizant as you move forward. And so hopefully the next uh, several slides will show uh, the intentionality that we try to embrace uh, as a part of our process. We do have a poll that is going to pop up here in a second. Right. So in retrospect to what Brian was saying, this one is going to kind of recenter focuses around mission and value. So uh, our second poll question is, does your library or organization's mission and values leave room for building mutually beneficial collaborations with community partnerships? Can we see those responses, Kevin? Awesome. All right, so we have 82% who say yes to this question, about 6% no, and 12 who are still developing. And we just wanna reassure you that these are um, some of the things that uh, many libraries try to introduce in their, their mission and values. And if you aren't quite there yet, um, that's not, you know, a deterrent to try to include uh, DEI strategies in your, you know, strategic roadmaps for your vision for where your libraries can go. So um, we hope we hope that this information kind of gives you the the push that your organizations might, you know, be interested in taking as far as um, being more inclusive in spaces that you know reach the needs of so many in our in our communities. And so taking into account, you know, everything that uh, we've experienced and uh, been experiencing societally, um, the library's mission from Forsyth County Public Library, um, it, it, the, 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 it, the version of it uh, now uh, does, in fact, uh, leave room, we believe, for those community partnerships um, and that it, it, it states that we equip power and connect the community through library services. So fairly broad and, 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 um, and an open uh, concept, kind of a mission statement, if you will, because it leaves room uh, for us to, you know, determine uh, with uh, in partnership with the community, you know, what the equipping and empowering and connecting uh, will look like, both on a you know, kind of a, a macro and a micro level. We, we you know, want to hear from specific community members uh, and, and want to interact with them to learn directly from them what, you know, connecting looks like and how they wish to be empowered and, and you know, what it is they need to be equipped with um, in order to, you know, cope and, and deal with, um, you know, the different things that affect or impact them. Um, but as Shannon alluded to, as you are developing um, your statement or even, you know, revisiting your statement uh, for potential revisions or the need to kind of update it periodically, um, you know, we, we lean into these um, kind of principles, if you will, keys uh, to, to successfully uh, not only, you know, develop mission statements, but beyond, you know, the mission statements, actually put it into practice in terms of your development um, and delivery of programs and services. You know, we lean on the following principles or the principles therein that are on the screen now to uh, assess and acclimate uh, the, uh, into the community without alienating uh, community members or partners, potential partners from, from the process. And so first is observation. And I say first, but it's kind of cyclical um, as the graph uh, or graphic uh, suggests. Um, but it's, observation is, is key for us. And, and that uh, to us means that you take time to learn or even relearn uh, both your organization and the community that you're responsible for serving. Um, you know, when, when I came on board, again, as I kind of alluded to earlier in the discussion or presentation, um, I, I wanted to spend a lot of time observing as opposed to just coming in haphazardly, you know, throwing things against the wall to see what would stick. And so um, through that observation, I did learn a lot uh, about Forsyth County, and I don't mind sharing it uh, in this form. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things that I learned about Forsyth County in particular was that um, it was a very proud uh, community, uh, but we were also conservative. Uh, community in in many ways and and in you know while some 
depending upon, you know, whom you're speaking it with and in what context, you know, the term conservative might have a negative uh, connotation. But when you also speak about, you know, say things of uh, that, that relate to fiscal matters or, or financial responsibility and, and you know, due diligence there, uh, conservative may have, you know, great connotations. And so, uh, but by and large, I, I just really learned through observation, um, you know, that we were a, a fairly conservative uh, community and organization um, in Forsyth County. And, and, and I needed to um, be mindful of that as I moved uh, and navigated the terrain, so to speak. Um, introspection is, is also incredibly key uh, when it comes to developing a DEI strategy because you don't want to be um, and should not allow uh, yourself or the organization um, that you're representing to be moved uh, by mere whims and wishes. And, and uh, you know, even if you might be personally offended or afflicted by something, you have to think about, you know, how can I position the organization to maintain its effectiveness, uh, you know, and to navigate, um, you know, very political waters and emotionally charged situations. How do I ensure that the, the, the library or whatever my organization is, how do I ensure that um, it does not lose its footing and its place in the community through the process. And so periodically check your temperature, check the temperature of your staff. Um, and, and, you know, when you, um, you know, find that there's a lot of anxiety or frustration, um, it's not that you want to, you know, stamp that out or, or ignore it. You create the space for it um, to exist. You create the space and the opportunity to address it uh, without necessarily allowing it to be the sole determinant or driver of, of your, you know, organization's plans and processes. Um, and then last but not least, you want to be patient. You have to be patient uh, throughout the process. Um, trust the process, as they say uh, in Philly, should we have any uh, one uh, in attendance uh, in, in that area of the country. But, um, you know, you want to pace yourself and resist the urge to be easily swayed by national um, or even regional trends that may not necessarily apply to your local community. Um, here's the example I'll share from, from that regard. Um, you know, as I talk about making sure that you're creating something that is intentional and 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 responsive to the needs and the and the you know tenor in your community. Um, when I arrived in Forsyth County during the time of you know the summer of 2020, which um, I think will will go down, um, you know, in the annals in the in the history books as being a really important one. Um, there were a lot of protests stemming from some of the stuff that had, had occurred, and um, one of the things that I noticed in Forsyth County, whereas a lot of, you know, urban cities or centers, you know, there were protests that were happening to the early hours of the morning, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning, there were a lot of rest and, and, you know, and, and just, you know, a lot of things happening, a lot of damage to property, you know, just a lot of stuff happening. Whereas in Forsyth County, um, you know, the protests that happened in the heart of Forsyth County, which is uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, they were kind of wrapping up around eight o'clock, you know, nine o'clock p.m. You know, people were back at home and, you know, and, and you know, there was, uh, it was civil, if you will. Um, and there weren't a lot of arrests. There weren't a lot of um, you know, property damage. Uh, you know, there's photos and perhaps it would have been wise of us to include them in this presentation. But, you know, uh, my deputy director in particular, her office faces the, the street uh, where some of the protests were happening. And, you know, we have photos of them marching right up and down the streets uh, before the, you know, while the library is still, you know, operating and, and, uh, but again, it was it was civil. It was calm. It was and then ended um, at a reasonable hour, if you will, which which again spoke to um, the conservative nature of, of uh, Forsyth County. And so um, I had to take a step back. Right, I'm I'm a African American male, and I'm seeing Ahmaud Arbery, and I'm seeing you know uh, George Floyd, and you know things happening to them. And while I might have been you know, personally, like, move to take, you know, real swift action and maybe action that might have, you know, damaged my own uh, health and well-being and safety, I had to take a step back and realize, you know, this is a, you know, this is a different organization, not that it's not, or excuse me, a different climate, a different city, um, not that it's not one that doesn't, you know, want change and want progression, um, but we're going to have to go about it uh, perhaps in a more measured way. Right. And and so you, you have to, you know, observe, you have to do the introspection and you, and you have to be patient uh, with yourself and with those around you uh, when you're wanting to uh, successfully integrate um, a strategy that can sustain uh, itself. We can advance to the next slide. 
And so um, <laughs> pushing past our preferences and towards sustained change, right? So I don't really need to reiterate much of what I've said already, uh, but I will point out or call out this quote that again resonated with me for the purposes of this, this uh, presentation and this discussion that we're having. Um, and it is that we cannot change anything until we accept it, right? Condemnation does not liberate, it oppresses. Um, and, and the way that speaks to me is that, you know, while, while I might be agitated, while I might be, you know, really um, offended or upset by something that occurs, um, you know, it, to, to, to move so swiftly or so quickly to, to anger, um, it, it really would only oppress and, and stifle, you know, my ability and my organization's ability to actually advance change and be a part of the process, right? Um, it would have been very uh, um, easy, perhaps, as a, a relatively young African-American male, 39, be 40 in September, it would have been relatively easy because of my identification with some of the um, lives that were, were taken and, and harm uh, in the midst of, you know, 2020 and certainly even prior to, right? Uh, it would have been very easy for me to take a stance and say, you know, Black Lives Matter, right? And, and to create an initiative and, to, you know, put some Black Lives Matter on a, on a library shirt. Um, and I understand that this, that maybe that would have been uh, a very popular stance that might've resonated with a lot of my colleagues in, in other, uh, you know, counties and or municipalities. But again, knowing where I am, appreciating where I am and, and the community in which I live, we didn't do that, right? Because had I done that, I might not be here today to talk to you about what success we have experienced over the past two years, right? Because I would have made myself a target and thereby making the library a target and perhaps rendering us uh, less effective to actually bring about some of the change that we think we were you know, uh, able to play a part of over the last two years. And so we didn't do uh, a Black Lives Matter themed you know, bookmark or, or shirt or even an initiative, but what we did do because we know that the, the community that we exist in appreciates its 10 libraries, appreciates the robust, uh, diverse collection that we have uh, in our materials. We did create an initiative called Read to Write Wrongs. And that was our response in some ways, or part of our response in some ways to some of the social unrest. And one of the first um, uh, programs uh, that's, that, that spawned from this Read to Write Wrongs initiative was a, uh, a evening virtual conversation series called Lounging with the Library that was held monthly. And through those uh, conversations, we, we met with um, different uh, county leaders um, and both at the grassroots level and at the, you know, the, the administrative um, uh, level uh, and, and talk to them about various inequities that exist and disparities that exist in various disciplines. And we started with ourselves. Uh, we had a forum, a conversation where we talked about uh, disparities and inequities in, in library, both in terms of how we staff um, and how we serve. Um, then from there, we progressed uh, and had conversations about you know, health inequities and, and conversations about disparities and how police interact with different communities, particularly those in, in you know, communities of color. Um, we had conversations about food disparities. We had conversations about um, you know, fi the financial industry and, and brought in experts to talk about you know, uh, uh, financial practices and the ways in which institutions have you know, historically uh, maybe uh, you know, worked against um, or set in practices that have worked against um, you know, minorities and, and, and other persons who are trying to establish themselves um, with, with, with credit and, and with the means to move ahead and create generational wealth. And so, you know, it was a strategic approach. It wasn't following the trend. It wasn't following, um, you know, what had really at that time become also a very polarizing and, and politicized term. Um, it was creating something new that resonated, um, you know, with um, our constituents and would not alienate um, anyone from some of the things that we hoped uh, to, to actually bring, would actually bring them further in to the fold so that we could have meaningful and rich conversations. Uh, through the success of that program, uh, we, we were able to do, do some other things and build on some other uh, things programmatically. Uh, but what I really want to highlight before passing the baton to, to Shannon Dell again here is that we, uh, through some of these programs, 
Um, I was also kind of in the background, like staff were kind of curating these programs. And, you know, I was kind of working more as a consultant on some of these things, whether it was the read to write wrongs or, you know, um, our, our work in working with uh, the Winston-Salem Foundation and, and other agencies to bring in the Under the Time, the Red Line exhibit. While they were on the front for kind of having those conversations with some uh, community partners, um, you know, I was also in the background having conversations with our county management office and our human resources uh, department and, and, and other internal service agencies to, to help position the library uh, as, a, as a trusted source that would not deviate, uh, you know, from too far from what the, the, the county's line was, if you will, right? I was trying to build rapport and trust um, so that we could you know, now today have the position that we do uh, in terms of having a position of outreach, diversity and inclusion manager. Uh, that did not exist when I came on board. It was not something that was even met initially with a lot of um, enthusiasm, uh, if you will, uh, but, but through uh, the, the county seeing that I was not, um, you know, interested in just following trends or in, you know, just saying things that would grab attention or grab headlines. They say, you know what, Let, let's, let's trust and see where it goes, right? And, and, uh, and so through those conversations, we were able to uh, build some equity and build on the affinity which we had. And, and now Shannon uh, is, has been employed for the last year or so with us as a outreach diversity and inclusion manager. I don't know, Shannon, if you want to chime in and add anything to that equation, but welcome to do so. <laughs> sure. Um, as I mentioned, I come from uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, um, which is in a very large city and very progressive. And I remember just sh short of me uh, departing from there to come on board with Forsyth County Public Library. Like, they did take a stance on Black Lives Matter. We uh, began programming Black Lives uh, Matter story times and wearing t-shirts every uh, time we did a story time. Um, I remember uh, my last uh, Saturday working, it was a I Can Tell Black Story story time. So um, just to kind of have to, uh, I wouldn't say switch gears, but kind of adjust my lens um, in onboarding with Forsyth County, I didn't feel like, um, my Black life didn't matter because my library wasn't saying that my Black life mattered. Um, I thought that um, the nuanced approach to um, the programs, like um, Brian mentioned um, about the Lounging with the Library series, um, one of the series that you know actually spoke to me and how my Black life mattered was having the financial counseling. Um, I'm, I'm a fairly new homeowner and just learning about the different practices with appraisals and how values of homes of you know, minority owners can be less than uh, their counterparts. Um, learning how to kind of strategically navigate that I felt like was more impactful to me than just like a, you know, a, a narrative or just a stance. So I think that you know, in choosing to seek the value is uh, an important um, you know, grasp for a lot of um, minorities who, who are actually living, um, you know, with these, these, these challenges. So um, I actually applaud, you know, my library system because uh, this is something that, you know, I had to learn as I was coming in and I was, I was really on board with this approach. So um, this kind of helped me to really uh, navigate where I, I, I projected, you know, programming and training. I um, mean, if we can advance to the next slide so we can kind of jump into that. So um, one of the things that I really was interested in kind of navigating was like how the outreach, diversity and inclusion role fit in a library system and in a county that essentially didn't have one before. Um, so one of the ways that I, you know, talk to Brian about approaching that is like how we could massage and better equip those internal relationships. Um, we are county government agency, so we actually have to coordinate a lot of what the library does through the internal county's HR division. So kind of strengthening those relationships so that, you know, we get some of that buy-in back when we, we need it or we need to leverage it. So um, that was one of the 
first things um, kind of coming in was to establish a more cohesive relationship with internal and external agencies to a certain extent so that we could further the library's reach in our community. Um, another one of the things that you know was more of a principle for me coming in was providing support to staff for training and uh, their program development so that we could you know have a stance on program diversity as well as you know and, and, and on top of that, serving in my leadership role and as a liaison committee for a few of our committees here with the library. And uh, one of the ways that we did that was we played to our strengths. We're a very program heavy organization and a lot of libraries are, that's their bread and butter. So we try to think of very um, concise ways to expand the programming so that not only the community could see the relevance of it, but our county agencies could see um, how beneficial having these programs and including county partnership for having these programs would be. So one of the ways that we did it were um, when I came on board, um, I'm a, a tech person. I, I like to delve in things on the side. Um, so I, I do have uh, some background in, in videographer and uh, videography and uh, editing and things like that. So I was just like, hey, let's do a video slash documentary series. Um, we titled it Our Voices and we were strategic about trying to enhance uh, the stories of our multi-racial or multi-ethnic community members. Um, but with the spin on it, we wanted to include employees, county employees, um, telling their story, why moving to Winston-Salem um, for Sipe County was so important to them. Um, we earmarked for Hispanic Heritage Month, for uh, Native American Heritage Month, Black History Month, and Asian, Asian Pacific Islander Month. And um, we shared that opportunity with every county employee to be able to engage with us. And the response was actually kind of stunning because I, I don't think that um, uh, anyone ever really expected the library to m make this um, proclamation that, you know, we want to hear your stories uh, as as far as like what moving here, what your family um, moving here, what that meant to you. So um, it actually put us in a position to um, not only kind of showcase our skill set, but um, just, you know, make, make ourselves available. So, um, you know, we kind of sort of realized a little bit later, like, you know, this is actually really important. And we were actually tapped to do more things for the county as far as like retention and, and recruitment. Uh, they asked us to, you know, make some videos to kind of help do that. And I, I don't think that that opportunity exists without, you know, massaging these sorts of relationships. So another thing that yeah, we introduced were literacy stations. Uh, Forsyth County um, has many libraries. Um, so there are two extra um, libraries outside of our 10 locations, but with the onset of COVID, um, considering that these were strategically placed in uh, communities where children um, cohabitate, it kind of set us back about, you know, being able to participate and engage with them when, you know, we had all those shutdowns. So we had to be very strategic about, well, we have all these materials, how do we still get them out to people in the community? So this allowed us to establish relationships with local businesses in our community where we would set up a, um, it's like a large bookcase. We had book materials, we had acrylic signage, um, activities um, for uh, self-directed activities for children, um, basically something from the collection that would suit an entire family. Um, but while they were in and doing business within the community. Um, so we have four of those stations set up currently. Um, one is um, in partnership with a uh, LSTA grant that we received from the uh, Institute of Museum and Library Services um, at a local laundromat. So like it, being able to diversify our programs um, actually allowed us to you know, get creative with where we were with our reach. And another way that we also did it was through another video series um, called Literacy Breaks. Um, we actually were able to partner on um, this actually launched um, in a partnership with um, our city agency um, for a um, it's called uh, the uh, International Village Festival Series. They hold it every year. And these last couple of years, they kind of had to pivot and be remote due to the pandemic. So we were able to record these as the commercial segments 
for that um, that program series, and we kind of just ran with it. And it's our opportunity to show the diversity in our collection. We intentionally choose stories of color, own voice stories to kind of lift up and highlight so that our community knows like, you know, we see you, we recognize you, and we want your stories to be recognized. So that's a bit about, you know, what we've been doing with, you know, ODI relationships and program diversity here in Forsyth County. And we also have a poll. All right, so this one centers around programming. Does your library or organization have programs, activities, or events that address ideal principles, inclusion, diversity, equity, and access? I think we're ready for the results. All right, so we've got about 51% for programming, 14 for no, and 35 for still developing. And if you have any questions about, you know, wanting to kind of start these sorts of um, diverse program initiatives or just anything that you want to pick our brains about, feel free to uh, drop questions in the chat and uh, we can um, talk about them a little more in the breakout sessions. All right, I think we're ready to advance to the next slide. And as we do that, I, I would add that it's important from a programmatic standpoint uh, for you to, you know, particularly those of you who feel you, you that your organization does have those things already and you, and you want to, um, you know, uh, build upon them or, or, you know, leverage them to, um, you know, hopefully get to, to a place where you can, you know, uh, answer affirmatively to some of the earlier questions, like, you know, weaving that into a mission, um, or a vision or value vision or value statements, or, you know, using that to, to further build, uh, upon the relationships that you might have with some of your key stakeholders, it's important to, to, to feel comfortable uh, to leverage those activities um, and those events that already exist that your staff are already, you know, making a very concerted effort to bring to the public or to bring to, you know, your audience, um, you know, if you happen to be in an academic library, um, you want to make sure that you're leveraging those programs and those events and services, not just uh, for the one off uh, occurrence, but but also to, to again, continue to build upon, um, you know, your, your, your libraries or your agency's ability um, and reputation as, as one that um, is at the, um, you know, forefront of those discussions, or at least at the table, um, you know, having those discussions related to EDI. So um, speaking of being at the table, so to speak, and, and, and being um, a, a um, you know, agency that helps to, to, to advance um, you know, DEI priorities and initiatives, not only for, you know, ourselves and for our end users or customers, but for the county as a whole. Uh, we really think that a lot of these activities that we've talked to you about, talked with you about today, um, and even some of the others that, you know, might have been referenced, uh, but maybe we didn't have time to expound upon, we really feel confident that those, um, that those initiatives uh, have laid, uh, played a part or, or led to what we are now experiencing as a overall shift um, for the for the county as a whole. Um, back on May the 19th, uh, the Forsyth County uh, government from its Facebook page uh, shared uh, a resolution that had been adopted earlier that day by the Forsyth County Board of Commission uh, commissioners that uh, essentially affirmed and committed to the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion in every aspect of county governance and operations and services. Uh, this is again something that did not exists, um, you know, prior to uh, you know our coming on board as 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 library staff and county staff. And it's not that you know we're taking credit for this act and you know and saying that we had this much influence over over our county commissioners. However, uh, what what we do believe is that we you know uh, were intentional 
um, and, and having those conversations and in building relationships along the way and in, for, and in informing uh, the county manager's office and the commissioners for that matter about all of our efforts so that when the time uh, came, uh, they would too feel comfortable uh, getting on uh, on, on board with supporting uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in different uh, areas. I think Shannon alluded to this earlier in her, in her uh, when she was speaking, but you know the county uh, library system was was one of two county departments that had um, a or have a uh, position that is dedicated and devoted towards you know the pursuit of developing you know, uh, programs or services or cultures that are, you know, diverse and, and, and equitable and, and inclusive of the communities that we serve. And that is the library and the sheriff's department. Um, and, and, you know, we know that everyone pictured here, including our county manager, who's uh, kind of the front and foremost uh, individual with the strike tie, we know that he's cognizant of all of these efforts, right? Because, you know, I report uh, directly to the county, the deputy county manager, uh, the, the, the African-American gentleman in the back with the bow tie, I report directly to him. And he stays in concert and in conversation with the county manager and I stay in concert in a conversation with with both of them periodically about different things to make sure that they are informed um, and to make sure that I too am informed about the direction in which they want the county to go so that I don't um, take the county or the library system off the rails or, or move at a pace that um, while I might be comfortable at it, it wouldn't be a pace that the county as a whole is comfortable with going forward with. And so it is important to, to stay in, in sync and in step uh, with those stakeholders um, so that you can in fact, be around for the long haul to continue to affect change uh, in your organization and, and, and for the communities that you're charged with serving. And so um, at this time, uh, you know, not that it required me to say, do you all have any questions? Because uh, you certainly could have chimed in at any point in time with them. But um, if there are any questions or comments, um, I would love to hear them at this time. And I'm actually seeing uh, in the chat as, as Shannon uh, or, or whomever's advancing the slides notices uh, or, or puts on the contact uh, slide, you can contact Shannon or I at either, um, you know, e by either email or phone. But I do see a comment in the chat that I like to respond to. It says, have other uh, non-Black communities in your county participated in the DEI initiatives? So what, what I will say is that it is important that, you know, I, I say we are a county system, right? And we have 10 library locations. And I don't know how familiar, uh, you know, each of our, uh, each of the attendees are with Forsyth County, but we have 10 library uh, locations um, and an outreach division, obviously, which Shannon uh, sits at the helm of. Um, but our 10 locations are spread across the county, and we really feel really positive about where our footprint is in the community. Uh, approximately, I think five or six of them are situated in Winston-Salem and the uh, and the remaining uh, ones are situated in uh, Louisville, Clemens, uh, Walkertown, Kernersville and a small town called Rural Hall. These are majority, uh, each of these uh, uh, towns that I've named are, are uh, majority um, uh, white, uh, towns and, 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 you know, municipalities. And what we have witnessed and observed is that those, uh, the staff at those locations and the, um, you know, the, 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 the community members or customers who patron or frequent the, the locations in those, uh, in those branches, you know, they're as supportive of, of our, you know, targeted programs and, and, and events uh, that might, you know, uh, lift up diversity and, and equity and inclusion principles as they are of any of our other uh, services and programs. And again, I think that speaks to the fact that we haven't moved at a pace that is too fast or too aggressive, uh, you know, for or too off-putting uh, for any of our communities, right? Winston-Salem, North Carolina, right? Uh, home of, you uh, of Winston-Salem State University, uh, a well-known HBCU, home of uh, what I find to be a very progressive, um, uh, uh, you know, institution, Wake Forest University. You know, Winston-Salem with these two 
um, you know, higher education uh, higher, or higher institutions of higher education would probably be very receptive for a quicker, faster pace, right? If we were to adopt a quicker, faster, more assertive pace, right? But again, we're the county library system. And so we moved more measured and more um, intentional or deliberately uh, to, to ensure that we weren't alienating people from the majority white communities as we uh, adopted some DEI, um, you know, strategies and practices. Um, I'll, I'll share this last thing and, and ask Shannon to chime in if she has any thoughts on, on that particular question or any other questions that might have come through. Um, but um, we have a system-wide publication uh, that we've developed in the two years I've been here as well. It's called Intersections. Um, partially because a lot of our library locations are uh, situated near intersections and, and, and uh, kind of four-way uh, stops or whatever, uh, but also because we acknowledge that the libraries at the intersection um, or, or the confluence of a lot of discussions that are happening in and around our county, right? And so um, in this publication, we feature things that are obviously happening at the library, but we also highlight some of the efforts um, of, of, of you know uh, some of the agencies who we partner with. Um, you know, in this coming issue, we'll have inter we'll have the Arts Council. Um, you know, a feature on the Arts Council, and it's a very quality publication. And the reason why I'm highlighting this in this uh, response to that comment is because you know uh, the people in conservative areas uh, they love this publication, right? Uh, it's a real high quality magazine. They love this publication, uh, including the 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 issue where redlining was right on the cover. Right, uh, including the issue, the first inaugural issue where we did a whole spread on the Black Philanthropy Initiative. They love it, right? Because it, it, it resonated with them. Uh, it was a quality publication, um, not unlike uh, uh, Forsyth Woman, right? Which is another quality publication uh, that is available, widely available in the county, right? So that was a part of my observation, right? When I got here, I looked at you know, I knew I wanted to do a system wide magazine. So I looked at the quality and, and, and the content that was in these other, you know, real nice publications uh, that were happening and, and being disseminated across. And so I made ours kind of mirror the quality. And, and so, anywho, so, so we've been able to sprinkle in information. We've been able to sprinkle in services and programs in that uh, publication. And, and frankly, we think that's made um, a lot of the DEI uh, initiatives and programs that we've talked about more palatable uh, for communities that might otherwise turn turn you know a, a blind or eye or deaf ear to to those uh, initiatives. So um, I raised my hand so that I could. That was a lot of information, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, but I didn't really get your answer. I didn't really get the answer that I was asking the question because you guys are a county library, right? In yeah. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're a county library in North Carolina. Do you partner with libraries that are public city libraries or state libraries or do you partner with... So here you guys have this wonderful uh, webinar right now. Be intentional, not... Mm -hmm. I can't read the rest of that. Create okay. so. But the thing is, is that as Black people, we're always intentional. As Black people, we're always the one to go out and, hey, can you help our communities? As Black people, we're the ones who are always initiating um, this information as far as like Ms. Page said about, she. I just bought a house too. And so um, nobody came to me and said, hey, you know, if you're a Black person, they, your appraisal might be this, that, and a third. But that's something that we as Black people, we don't share certain information with each other. Sure. But how productive were you, you know, how productive, I think I'm asking a lot of different questions. How, <laughs> produ okay. how productive is your webinar as it reach people that are not um, people of color? So, so, so that's I'm my sorry. question, I think. Yeah, that's it. Like how productive, how, yeah. um, were you trying to reach people who are not, no disrespect, are not Black people, but are you just trying to reach, because as Black people, we already know certain things about how to be. And so I'm saying, I guess my question is a lot of questions, because I'm thinking a lot as I'm listening to your webinar. Sure. 
True. And I'm just trying to understand who were you trying to reach in your webinar? That's one question. Okay, so sure. So, so um, we, we were invited to this webinar to talk about, you know, DEI strategies and, and, and things of that nature. And what, what I am, um, how I will answer the question is, I think it is important um, and, and actually, could we advance to the slide um, where we spoke about like what we hoped participants would glean from the day? Yeah, thank you. You can stay right there for a moment. Um, so, so what I would hope is that be they, you know, black person themselves or an ally, or be they someone who's on the you know, front lines or someone who's in administration, administration um, what I would hope is that this would affirm for people, all, all attendees, the need to be very intentional in their pursuit of developing DEI plans, uh, DEI programs, DEI efforts that would have some staying power, right? Um, so you have a lot of outreach. We, we do have a lot, a lot of outreach. We, we do a we do a lot of outreach. We do. Absolutely. How many people reach back to you? Are well, you referring to customers getting in touch with us about? I'm referring their to experience. other libraries that are not that are non-black libraries. So let me. Let, I, I think I, I think I understand that part of the equation uh, of, of the question, and I want to I want to mention something. So, so we're, we're a county library system, right? And there are a lot of different municipalities and towns right. in the county, right? Um, we work with. So, so we have what you might consider um, black libraries within our county, right? Because we have libraries that are situated in, uh, you know, very ethnic uh, zip codes and, and serving very, you know, ethnic communities, right? And, and, uh -huh. and so, and so we, we have those libraries as a part of our larger system. And, and, and we um, engage all of the county and all of the town, uh, or towns rather, with, um, you know, programs and events uh, that we feel will resonate with the whole, but we also give the staff at the library, at the individual libraries, the creative freedoms to develop programs and, and events that they feel will resonate with the people who come in and out of their doors as well, right? Um, but but again, it's all one system. But now let me let me just expound on that a little bit more by saying this too. There are neighboring um, library systems, um, you know, understanding public how public library systems are situated, right? Like there, there are neighboring systems. So Guilford County um, does not have a county system. Um, they're all municipal. So Gibsonville is a part of Guilford County, High Point, Greensboro, et cetera. But all of these are different library systems. And so we work with those different library systems from time to time on initiatives as well. Uh, we support their community reads, as an example, because we know we have users who will drift in to Forsyth County and Winston-Salem from those areas. And so we, we you know, will champion their community reads and, and they have championed ours, right? We have one that is coming up called On the Same Page in which we selected the personal library or the community uh, partner with us to help select the personal librarian um, uh, as, as our community read. And so those library systems and those other municipalities and jurisdictions, they're going to be championing and, and supporting and promoting our community read. So we do have those collaborations and we do have agencies. Um, in addition to those public libraries in these other areas, we have other agencies who do, in fact, reach back into us uh, for assistance with different things because we've created um, well, built upon the footprint that, that is already here in a positive way. Uh, right now, the county has opened up uh, ARPA applications, right? The American Rescue Something Act, right? Applications for, for disseminating funding for various initiatives. We've had a lot of organizations who've asked us to write letters of support, right? Because they know that we have uh, you know, good affinity and good relationships with the county, right? And so we definitely have agencies and organizations and, and even individual people who reach back into us 
for support, reach back into us to give us feedback, reach back into us with hopes of partnering um, on one initiative or, or, or the other. Um, I want to, I hope that answers a part of that question that was asked. I want to go back to uh, the earlier part, just real quick to say that again, our aim, our goal, our hope here is that we would remind or impress upon people and, and organizations, librarians listening, that there is a need to be intentional and create strategies and programs and services that resonate with your audience, no matter how broad, large, or, or diverse that audience may be. You can't just say, hey, um, and this is gonna be unpopular and I might alienate some people here, but you can't just say, hey, Drag Queen Storytime was hugely successful in Seattle. It was hugely successful in Podunk County. It was hugely successful in Boston. Let's do it. What if it's not gonna be hugely successful here in Winston-Salem? What, what criteria, what feedback have you received from the community that says it's gonna be hugely successful here or wherever you may be, right? And so I'm talking about in creating DEI plans, processes, events, et cetera, let us not just look to the trends and look to the magazines to see what is happening around the country. We can stay cognizant, right, of that information. We can stay aware of that information but but to just you know whims whimsically adopt it uh, without doing due diligence to see whether or not there is a call for it in our community that would be negligent um, and, and would potentially uh, you know negatively impact your own professional lifespan and ability to be able to maintain a place and a position in the organization to in fact lead some change and get to a place where the agency is more receptive to this thing that you were trying to do. Um, in the community where I grew up, uh, there was a, I grew up uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, had a lot of kin folk uh, in, in Hopkins, South Carolina, and, and, uh, and, and they would always say, you know, you, you got to put the medicine in the dog food. And I said, what you mean? You got to put the medicine in the dog food. Well, what that meant is you can't go up to a dog and say, here's your, your you know, your Advil, or here's the thing that's going to get you, you know, get rid of those uh, stomach worms, you know, take it, dog, dog going to turn away, right? You got to infuse it in the food, sprinkle it in the food that they're already hyped to eat, right? And I hear what you're saying, Mr. Hart, I do, <laughs> and I really do, and I understand what you're saying, however, I'm, I want to be very careful how I say this. Um, we've been putting medicine in the dog food for years and years and years and years. And I can't go to the dollar store in my community and get hair, hair product for myself because there is no product there. As libraries, when we do the audits to see in that community, how are your, how is your information whether I'm in your community or not, if I decide I'm gonna drive to a predominantly white neighborhood and I want to find a book by Bell Hooks, just for example, how, how if I go to that community and there's no book there because nobody ever said to that library system, hey, you need to do an audit to see if your information is inclusive for everybody, not just your community. And I understand what you're saying about, yeah, LGBT, you can't have drag queens going in every single, but if you start small, like you've been saying all along about how you're trying to be intentional, how you're trying to be inclusive. We've been trying to be inclusive for over 400 and something years. And so your smallness in saying that, like, yeah, we can't just jump out there. Well, when are we gonna jump, Mr. Hart? When, when do we jump? I mean, as far as like, yeah sharing information like if if i go into a predominantly white library and i'm looking for it and i know that i'm gonna run in that library to get a book about i know i can get a book about harry potter and i can get a book about harry potter in a black library too but if i'm looking for something a little bit more specific as it relates to me i can't go in a predominantly white library and find that book because it's not going to be there and that those are the things that I'm trying to point out. I can find Harry Potter in any library I go into, but I can't find, mm -hmm. um, what's the name of the guy who wrote the book for children who are, are track stars? Oh, you're talking about Jason Reynolds. Jason Reynolds. 
I went to Barnes and Noble in Dallas, Texas. They never even heard of Jason Reynolds. And that to me was very surprising. Like this man just, I mean, he just won awards. So how is it that you don't have one of his books on your shelf? And this is the kind of thing that I'm asking you, how much more intentional do we as black people have to be? We're like this in our community. I, like I said, I can go to any community and find a Harry Potter book, but I cannot go in any community and find a Jason Reynolds book. So, so, you, so, so, so and, and I, want, I want you to chime in as well. And I, I think that's a, um, a great thing being our outreach diversity and inclusion manager who might I add uh, is on a team uh, within Forsyth County Public Library that is in the midst of um, doing or preparing to do a uh, diversity audit on our collection. Um, so, so I can't speak to Houston, Texas or Dallas, Texas uh, and what the Barnes and Noble there should, should or is not or, you know, maybe preparing to do, but that is certainly something that, that uh, we do have prioritized as a part of this. I, I just want to say this just though. Example. No, sure. No, sure. I know. I know. I know. And 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 apologies if at any point in time I, I may jest or made light of any of your questions or or the the um you know the passion and the and the conviction in which you asked them because I do feel you on, on everything you said. Um and to that point, there's two things, two disclaimers really that I probably should have given at the front of this. One, I'm not an expert in this, right? As it relates to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, I I'm an becoming an expert on Forsyth County, I hope, uh, but I'm not an expert in diversity and equity and diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, and I don't think, although Shannon has the title, I wouldn't necessarily call Shannon an expert, but she is certainly um, on the cusp of, of, of becoming one and she's a learner, uh, which is what is most important uh, to, to have a skill set to have in, in that role. Um, and that is why she was the selection that we made when staff in that position. But I wanna say this as my second disclaimer, you know, it, it is important, and this is a little off topic of the overall presentation, but I want to say this. It is important, um, you know, peace of mind and and uh, fit, right? Peace of mind and fit are, are, are incredibly important as well. And, you know, quite frankly, if I did not feel, you know, that I could exist, um, in, in Forsyth County, right? If I did not feel um, that I could have existed in Greensboro, North Carolina, if I did not feel that I could have existed, because I also did a brief stint in Charlotte, North Carolina um, as a professional librarian, if I didn't feel that I could exist um, in, in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, then I might have found a different um, environment, a different place to, to do my bidding, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm choosing to be patient enough and absorb the hits and 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 what might come from you know this approach, right? There might be some successes from this measured approach because I'm not offending anyone, right? But the the flip side of that is my mental, uh, you know, could potentially be strained. My emotions could be torn because I'm not able to act with the vigor and a pace that I might naturally feel predisposed to, right? Like I could, you know, I can do a lot of stuff personally to get things done, but if I know it's not the right place, then I'm, I'm, I'm sacrificing, I'm compromising a little bit. And if I didn't feel I could compromise any longer, maybe I would go, right? And, I, and as, a, as a matter of like self-preservation. And so I do believe, it's just my belief, it's not an expert opinion. I do believe that um, when minorities such as you and I, right, find ourselves in situations um, in environments that aren't embracing of who we are as a people, of who we are as, as a community, um, then we can, you know, choose to go elsewhere. If we choose to stay, and I hear you, I feel, I feel what you're feeling and hear what you're thinking, right? But as a matter of self-preservation, as a matter of self-preservation, we can, you know, hey, this, if we were at a club, and they were doing dances and partying in a way that we went, and went down with, even if it was a full of a bunch of us. We would say, hey, this ain't for me. I love my people, but not the way my people are behaving here. This ain't for me. Similarly, we move into an area, find ourselves in a situation or in an environment that's not conducive for, for our success. As, as minorities, we can say, hey, I got to move. This isn't for me. 
right? If we say I can actually deal in the stomach with some of this, even though all of it's not for me, then stick around and try to be a part of the change and make it better for a more for the next you to, that comes along. And so that's those are my comments. I, I love the the question and the dialogue. And again, my contact information was at the end of the slide. So if you ever wish to continue this offline, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I want to go back to um, the original question that was posed about what non-Black communities um, we actually Devin, can you put that question back up yeah so uh the question was have other non-black communities in your county participated in the dei initiatives <laughs> okay so um one of the things that i was very intentional about when i came into fcpl was i knew that i wanted to um bring awareness to other cultural aspects. Um, I did some census reviews of the community that I was coming to work in, and I wanted to lift up um, awareness, um, traditional values, cultural values for those communities. So I was very strategic in the types of programming. So uh, we launched the Lunar New Year's program, and I knew that you know even if we couldn't reach, physically get into those audiences, I knew that I wanted to contact the spaces or places where I knew they would frequent. So I reached out to local pastors of um, Asian specific congregations to see if they could advertise um, or promote certain initiatives and programs that we were doing. So I know that you, you mentioned um, in one of your remarks to Brian that uh, when you go to places, you don't see you represented. Um, we're dealing in customer service. You're providing your business to a business. Every business that, that is, you know, wanting to be lucrative has a customer um, survey or a customer complaint where you can give your feedback. If you are patronizing a business that does not cater to you, you provide your, you provide your feedback for said business so that, you know, you can make them aware that you don't feel represented. You can do it in a very palatable way. Um, you can choose not to um, patronize that business as well. But in each of the instances that you, you referenced, the, the Dollar General that you patron um, patronize, the Barnes and Nobles that you patronize, um, those are large businesses. And if, if you go on their websites and you share your story about how you did not feel um, like you're, you're recognized there, I'm almost certain that someone would get in contact with you because not only is it you addressing your own personal issue, but you may be raising a concern that someone like you didn't feel comfortable raising. So that that is kind of the equivalent to to how I approach, you know, reaching out to community members. Like I, it doesn't directly affect me, but you know, us not programming for a particular audience, we may alienate them. So. In my in my honesty, my transparency, I made the I took the initiative to go out and reach those those parties, so that those community members could feel included. Um, obviously, it, it did wonders for the program in itself, but it also helped us to establish relationships and partnerships that we didn't initially have before. So that's kind of how I put the medicine and the dog food um, with with that regard and. Um, if you if you do have questions like I, like I understand like someone else um I believe put um, a question in there for like how do you initiate DEI programs for communities that just aren't diverse just because they aren't diverse doesn't mean that they don't want to learn about diverse issues so this is where the the purpose of the the presentation of the webinar comes into place pacing yourselves like yes you may not have this particular audience but it doesn't mean that this particular audience doesn't want to be made aware of what you know largely affects several other minority groups so um, i'm hoping that that kind of addresses or answers your question a little bit thank you so much shannon for that response and brian as well um I think what we'll do, we're a little bit over time uh, with the presentation portion of the session. We're gonna switch into breakout rooms. Um, so folks, if you don't wanna join us for the next 20 to 30 minutes um, to break out into small group discussion, feel free to head out. Um, you'll receive a link to the recording, a follow-up survey and these slides as well, along with Brian and Shannon's contact information. 
Um, so feel free 